Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very, 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 very happy Monday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. A little bit of a late morning for me, so I do apologize about the delay. But as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest. Again, whatever you want in your good old life, I'm wishing for you right here, right now. As we get into the live scene, wasting no more time. And oh my god, it's Darth Maul shoving his massive girthy red dildo down these bullish bungholes. It just destroying bloody Sunday for everyone out there. And of course, while everyone's getting excited by this move above the 89 exponential, while we actually even were looking looking for that based off of our lower time frames the higher time frames were certainly very clear be on the lookout for the next major local high and i believe that that is what we have with a massive bearish engulfing dildo like this on decent volume i would say actually pretty heavy volume and bring us all the way back down to the yellow 21 expansion, which has provided the impetus for support as of right now. And I actually am looking for a bounce off this area, probably around the 3900 level, which is where CMEs did close out on Friday. Let me re just remind you right over here. Uh, yeah, right around a little bit about a little bit below actually um, uh, 3900 actually is where this is going to look like on a daily. Of course, if we do go down to an hourly, then the gap is all the way at 3930. So again, anywhere within that range around 3900 to 3930 is essentially where I'm looking for for spot kind of rally back up into and likely to be rejected from so i will be having some resting orders in that area just tentatively speaking and overall looking for continuation off of that likely to the downside so in the back going back on over here to the daily or sorry perhaps not even the daily but let's go to the three day yeah, the three days is, is where this becomes very visually abundantly apparent. But while everyone was getting very excited about this girthy green dildo over here, perhaps taking this bitch out of the bearish uh, the bearish control of this market, well, it was very obvious when you take this in con into context with the overall consolidation going back for the last three months in this more aggressive downtrend, that this is just to be considered consolidation. It is still having that nice signature of falling off volume going from left to right. And with this trappy trap right over here, I would be looking Looking for some more continuation off that. Of course, we still do have all of our higher time frames relatively in a bearish posture as far as you know where the exponentials and uh, and simple moon averages are are currently at i mean the three day is still death crossed to all hell and uh, getting rejected back below the yellow 20 mic exponential is not the best look on this guy although of course you know still have a couple days for this guy to actually be set in stone but we're going to go back to what we were talking about over the last so three, four days with looking at the four hour uh, dildo golden cross, which we caught last week. And remember, the four hour dildo golden cross typically has, you know, it, it typically plays out at the very least for about five days uh, and as much as 21 days and gets you anywhere from, you know, 10 percent to 25 percent, historically speaking, which we'll go over in a second. But just to kind of put this into consideration now, we have gone from bottom to top about, you know, 18 percent, a little bit under 18 percent in the span of seven days. So we're kind of right in the middle of the pack as far as uh, historical relevancy of these things go, which I do put a lot of weight on. I mean, this was the play to make last week. And you'll notice that each and every time that we did get this golden cross for the last year, ever since the mark cycle did turn around, which it is not, which is still very much a downwards market until we actually, you know, put in some higher highs, you know, get above 6,000, you know, get above the weekly 200 exponential maybe as well. Uh, but this was the last time that we actually even had the golden cross right here which presented about a 9% move and took about six days to play out. But you'll notice this, you know, you get your move, chugs on a little bit more, but at the end of the day, the red dildo party takes over and takes no prisoners. The time before that, very, 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 very similar reaction. In fact, we have from bottom to top about, uh, what is it, 25% move, taking about a uh, little under a little under two weeks, a uh, little under two weeks. And then you you have the same sort of reaction. You know, you're coming off this consolidation right here, big first move up, this one obviously a little bit more powerful, consolidation once again, which is what we saw at that 3900 level, and then big move up once again. And then that gets sold into now. Obviously, the, what we're looking at right now is happening a lot more fast. But I'm just getting, I'm just putting out there a gauge of what these have done in the, uh, you know, historically speaking for Bitcoin. As I want to see what the bots and algos have been responding to. And you know, the time before that, we have a very similar reaction over here from bottom to top. We have about, you know, about another 20. What is that? 21, 22% gain, and uh, Red Dildo Party started a little under, a little over two weeks. So again, compare that with, with what we're doing right now, about seven days, almost 20% versus, you know, what we're looking at right here, which again, very similar, you know, consolidates. This was kind of the 3,600 consolidation, big first move up, reaccumulates, re reconsolidates, big move up again, trap down. 
Um, and then the time before that was right over here, which a little bit uh, kind of on the weaker side, I suppose. But again, you know, about about six days, it looks like 14% um, off from the uh, off from the cross. So overall, we are getting a very similar signature to that. In fact, I'd even be a little bit more forwards with saying that the two day has got it even better because the two day 21 exponential has been the signal or sorry no it's a three-day 21 exponential yeah that's right it's a three-day 21 exponential over here the yellow 21 exponential that has been a good gauge for when a bull trap actually does indeed occur now when bitcoin gets above it especially for the last year it hasn't been too long after that that the, that the dump occurs why is this relevant well it tells us that the that that the area is getting a little bit more mature and again we're just putting in confluence with all the other things that we look at of course the last times that we were above it were over here in august you know before this dump spent about what a what is this about a week each and every deal is a three day is three days so it, it looks deceivingly smaller than what it really is this guy right over here is significantly more but again as soon as you break the 21 exponential to the downside it's red dildo party all the way down uh same thing with the time before that getting this the the, the top of this rally perfectly once you broke it fully with this guy right here all the way down to six thousand, and and then the the exact same signature that you see right here getting both the double tops breaks breaks well obviously this one g did get picked up once again and tried again but even after you broke the 21 exponential for the first time there was some there was some decent follow through on top of that so again if we were to see if, i i do think that bitcoin gets a bounce back up before it goes lower than you know 3700 but if we were to see uh a move down first i would imagine support is going to be around 3650 and i'd look for 3650 to bounce so whether it's here at about 3750 or 3650 you know, those are the two kind of ways uh, that I see. Uh, again, I, I ultimately, though, t t in order to put on like a real position, I'm looking for a move back up around 3,900. Something like that would look about right to me. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I need to get that on my fucking soundboard so I can just go, not a financial advisor, not a financial advisor. <laughs> do all that kind of shit and really annoy people. But what I do want to say is uh, just sharing what my thoughts and, and what I'll be doing in this market. As always, right now, I am completely flat. I believe yesterday, um, yesterday I was on my main account, but I did tell you when I was taking that short position on price action, we were looking at this right here now, weren't we? Yeah, we were looking at this as some sort of an ascending broadening wedge on a low time frame. Oh, it looks like something like this. Yeah, there we go. That obviously broke down, and uh, and then we lost 41, uh, 4130, which was a critical area that we spoke about. And after that, I mean, I, you know, talking about something like this happening, is uh, I mean, I'll be I'll be very front uh, front and forward with you. I closed most of my short position at low four thousand. I didn't I didn't get most of this move for for most of my position. I maybe had sixty nine or I maybe had like thirty percent of it uh, left open. Not that much. It was uh, it was <laughs> it was a little bit frustrating to be quite honest. But hey, you don't need to catch every move in order to get you know in order to make this a living. And let that be soothing to you. You know, let that be soothing that you don't have to catch every fucking move in order to do this as a professional. It, it doesn't have to be done. There's an abundance of opportunities. So even just catching 50% of a move, you can make a living. Uh, on this one, obviously, I caught much less than that. So again, very frustrating. But as always, I do want to remind, you know, everyone, if you do feel like, uh, if you, do feel like you missed out on this, there's always a the next trade. There's always a the next trade. Although I know that a lot of people got this. In fact, a significant amount of people reaching out to me saying, oh my God, $500 move, nicely done. All right, fucking yeah, man. That's what this channel is about. Very, very happy because people are taking the informations in and making it their own and then having great sex. That is fucking awesome. Anyways, um, okay, so that's what we saw right over here. That's what happened yesterday. Um, my streamer account is flat. I think I went flat at 37, uh, 84, 85, whatever this is. Uh, so I'm about, I don't know. You know, I, I don't really consider this a position, but um, I will be getting out of that if uh, if I do see that move back up to essentially retest of this area, which going on to BitMexico, you do see this ascending triangle that we put in over, you know, late last week and over the weekend that we broke out to the upside of. Um, if we could come back and retest this area, that'd actually be perfectly right around that 39, 30-ish area. Also lining up with this horizontal area uh, right here, again, same number, and basically encompassed by this whole consolidation, which would, you know, again, be about 38.90 to 39.30. That's essentially what I'm thinking. Pointed out to a higher dildo time frame, you can see that this does line up pretty much with uh, with the 236 Fibonacci retracement. We actually are resting on the uh, the 382 right now, and the 0.5 would be at that 36.50 area if we were to, you know, try 
trend down there. Obviously, the 618, very important now because the 618 will be, <laughs> is, is kind of coming in line with this rising support trend line that has been governing Bitcoin's uh, lows since this, um, since this more aggressive down, downtrend began, you know, coming off 6,000. So again, the macro picture at hand, still very much unchanged. Of course, the big thing that we were looking at yesterday was the weekly 200 exponential moving average, this purple moving average right here. Weekly had a very nasty close, extremely nasty close. I mean, a wick like this is a wick only a mother could love. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting. If you want to be bullish. Now, if you want to be bearish, well, not too bad, not too bad at all. But again, uh, as if you're a macro person, I always want to remind people, Again, it's not financial advisor, not financial advisor. But if I was a macro, long-term minded type person, what I'd be thinking is I'd be thinking, okay, as long as Bitcoin is below the, the purple 200 exponential on the weekly, don't want to be bullish. As long as Bitcoin's above the pink 200 simple moon average at 33.50, don't want to be too damn bearish, although it is a downtrend, so I am bearish. And I do believe that it does break at some point in time. But as far as looking for the next big directional trade, just like you know, waiting for six thousand to break, I'd need to see this this two hundred this two hundred simple at a thirty three fifty break first, which is actually going to be rising up pretty damn rapidly, uh, even a little bit higher than that. Now I'm going to be reaching thirty four hundred soon enough, which it should theoretically be lining up with that with that rise and support trend line that we looked at earlier. So again, this is the story at hand. Nothing's changed here as far as the macros, and this is what I really want to get on a ch out on a channel like this because I know a lot of people are very long term minded, which is completely fine. It's not. It's you know. It's not my style. I'm more of a short-term type person. Um, but hey, uh, if you want to make your life easier for yourself, understand where the actual macro picture does change. Now, Jesus Christ, I have some ground beef still in the back of my mouth. Sorry about that. Um, <coughs> apologies for that. Highly unprofessional. But you know what? I talk about dildos anyway, so you already knew. Anyway, so let's go to the monthly. And uh, the monthly will be closing in the next three days, right? Uh, it is a leap year, I believe. So there's only 28 days in February. And this is why it's important because that green 55 exponential is sitting right at 3676 on stamp. If Bitcoin closes below it, this will be the first time that Bitcoin has both opened and closed below that green 55 exponential in its history, in its history. And if that happens, then the next sort of target that I'd be looking at from a monthly perspective would be the cyan moving average right here, which is a little under 2,500 right now. So understand that. And especially if we do close below this green 55 exponential, which again, we actually, we are actually very much above right now. We're almost hundred dollars above. So doing well, except when you can lose $400 in the span of five minutes, maybe not so much, but Hey, you know, you got to give the bulls something to chew on. Um, but Hey, if, you know, if, if Bitcoin does close below it, then yes, I do look towards this area, but that has to be done by end of month. Okay. Got that out. Of, but overall this right here, and if it does happen, this will be considered by me as consolidation, which is what the lower time frames show lower time frames mean in a three day, but a three day is a lower time frame in comparison to a monthly. And what's up? Um, a deal. Hopefully I'm saying that right, man. As this massive floating dildos right in my face. Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, and if this is considered consolidation, then I'm going to be looking at these two moving averages right here, the 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential, which are rapidly converging on each other. I mean, they have, this is the first time that they've had these sort of, uh, these sort of very nasty slopes converging on each other since, well, you know, right over here and <laughs> you fucking know one. Um, and what would that essentially say? That would essentially just kind of give me further, con further confluent evidence that, if you were to end below there, then the next area that I'm really looking towards is, is this area right here. It's going to intensify the algo selling. It's going to intensify all the, you know, all, all, all the sell programs is what it's, is what it's essentially going to do. This is one of the big strategies that I, that I would use in the traditional marks, kind of judge if something was generally bullish, generally bearish. The fact that we're below the yellow 20 exp exponential on the monthly is just, it's, is bearish in general. The fact that we both open and close below it is extremely bearish. Um, and you'll notice that even in the past when Bitcoin did get below it, it actually called it perfectly when the bull market did start, uh, or I suppose, yeah, exactly, actually perfectly when the bull market started, right when Bitcoin got back above that yellow 20 mark bench. So again, understand the higher dildo timeframes. I know a lot of people getting very excited, very, 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 very um, exuberant, which is great. Cryptocurrency is still alive. You can still see Bitcoin rally sometimes, but don't forget what kind of mark cycle that we are in. As far as the macros is, is, is considered, we are still below the 200 exponential on the weekly. We are still below the yellow 21 exponential on the monthly. And from, from the most traditional standpoint, we are below the 6,000 breakdown point. So I have no reason to be not bearish. With that said, um, 
if Bitcoin were to close above the green 55 exponential, then I do think that this overall consolidation gets drawn out further, meaning that we're probably going to bounce up and, and bounce around, you know, around the fourth, you know, the, the high 33,000 slow 4,000 for quite for, you know, I don't know, another couple months, whatever it might be. Again, I don't have, I don't have a strong opinion on that. What I do have a strong opinion on is the reaction that we saw yesterday, which was quite nasty. Um, let's go back to the daily. Uh, okay. So daily, we got that daily stokes going to be coming down at very, 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 very sharply as well. By the way, the last time that the daily stokes were even in this range was in August for your September dump. And before that was, uh, was late July, um, uh, for, uh, for your dump from 8,000. And the time before that was your May dump over here. And then of course the time before that was your double top last year at, uh, 12,000. So again, a lot of things kind of line up with that. Even the jewel, um, while this is not a signal, the jewel can be used historically speaking, and it, it really doesn't ever last too long in this more critical area. Uh, above the 80 marker right here. I mean, each and every time it's actually gotten above there. And I, this is, this sounds, this is going to sound so fucking bad because it's like, bro, you know what? The jewel kind of does have a little bit overbought. <laughs> it's like that, you know? Because uh, each and every time that it does get above here, it actually has called massive fucking dumps. I mean, let's just, let's just do it historically. This was your last time right here. This was your time before that right here. This was your time before that right here. Actually, it did, it did have a drive higher on this one, but it did, again, tell you, you know, be cautious. And then, of course, the time before that was, you know, at 20,000. Um, so, again, I understand that a lot of things lining up with this. We had had this on, in the back of our minds. Of course, for myself as a trader, these were all the warning signals. Um, <clears throat> and now we're just kind of seeing them play out. Uh, daily RSI getting back below. Whoops, get off there, fucker. Uh, daily daily RSI back below the exponential, trending below the exponential after a major move like that. Of course, 12 hour stoke still coming down as well. Uh, do we have 12 hour bearish divergence? We do not. Where is our highest bear, bearish divergence? Yeah, 10 hours the highest bearish divergence that we see. Um, 12, uh, 10 hour jewel also signaling a short as well. In fact, I believe we saw, saw this yesterday as well. The four hour, yeah, four hour jewel. We spoke about this yesterday. That this was a per, this is a per, this is what a perfect signal looks like right here literally a perfect signal um and that's i mean not every fucking not every setup not not every setup like that is gonna, is gonna give you a move like this but jesus christ man uh jewel just getting it perfectly i think i think i posted that video a couple hours before the or sorry not a couple hours but a couple four four hour dildos before the actual dump so again if you did catch that well nicely done my friends nicely done anyways i should announce that i actually did put the i actually did put the same sort of uh, payment plans on the jewel as i did for the technical announce program of course i was i always want to remind people though there's been a lot of interest in the jewel which i understand it's a it's more sexy than like you know informational pro, uh, programs but understand it's there's no and i want to downplay it i really do want to downplay it there's no magic pills in this game i don't want to make it sound like you know it's 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 a substitute for good risk management it's not it's fucking not. If you can't make money already, it's not going to help. It's not going to help because if your risk management is not in place, at some point in time, you're going to take that loss that just takes your whole account. It's, it's, it's that fucking simple. It's that fucking simple. I always want to say that very deliberately and very clearly because I, you know, I have no intent to sell people things. I, I don't fucking need to sell anything, right? You know, I, tra I trade for a living. So if you aren't in that, understand that fact. Understand that fact. Okay, cool. Okay, so we talked about that. We talked about that. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, yeah, our lower time frame oscillators are getting pretty low right now. Uh, two, that's your four-hour stokes right there. This is your two-hour stokes kind of snaking around. Three-hour stokes uh, getting down there as well. But, you know, none of them crossing the upside or anything like that. But it is telling me that, hey, you know, if Bitcoin does grind this area, maybe even put a quick wick down to like 36.50. I don't want to be a buyer, but I do want to, um, you know... If, if I was looking to get neutral on, on any more of my position, that's where I'd kind of be doing it. And uh, again, I really, the goal is to reopen somewhere around the 3,900 mark, give or take a few bucks. Uh, let's go look at the longs and shorts. Longs and shorts also really telling the story as well. Yesterday, we spoke about this as just another confluent factor saying, hey, be on the lookout for that next major local top. We had a severe imbalance between the longs and shorts. We had about 28,000 longs versus you know, under 20,000 shorts. We actually even have less today, which is funny. Um, as I guess a lot of the, a lot of the shorts who were trapped probably just using that, um, using that activity to get out of their positions and what's going on over here. Okay. Just my phone going crazy at all hours of the day, of course. Um, but still we have, you know, 26,000, 20, 26 and a half thousand open, uh, longs versus 17 and a half thousand open shorts with, you know, one and a half thousand of these guys hedged. So we really have 16,000 open shorts. I mean, this is, you know, this, this is, 
<laughs> not generational low, but it's like, it's really fucking low, man. Anytime that it gets into this red box territory in the history of Bitcoin, that is lined up with major fucking dumps, major fucking dumps. I mean, you know, just to go through it, I know that we've done this a lot of times. This was, you know, this was your, your double top in, uh, in February last year at 12,000 going down to 6,000. This was your May highs and 10,000 going to 6,000. This was your, uh, this was your August dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This was your November dump from 6,000 to 3,000. And once again, we are, you know, we're, we're staying in this area for quite some time. I mean, you can stay in this area for quite some time, historically speaking, but it's just another thing also saying, hey, when you're in this mode, when you're in this area, be on the lookout. It's not, it's not necessarily a time to be bullish. There, each and every time for the last year, perfectly for the last year, it has been a dump, not a pump. Um, okay, cool. So going back on to Bitcoin right now, uh, again, and sorry, let's actually just go into the longs for a second. Bro, you see the longs? Are they like trapped? We got a bunch of trapped longs, bro. I think they're, I think they're, I think they're wrecked. It's like, yeah, that's what a fucking traps look like, trap looks like. That's kind of what we're looking for. You know, gets all the way up there, gets everyone excited. We get all the way up to almost 30,000 longs. 30,000 fucking longs. Bitcoin hasn't even taken out a major resistance. That's how crazy this market can get. Again, understand the great, highly esteemed, amazing social media venues like crypto Twitter, crypto Reddit, crypto fucking trading view, whatever the fuck it is. <sighs> Everyone getting very excited, you know, t uh, talking about the bear market being over. I mean, it's, I I'm, I'm happy to declare that the bear market is over when it's time to declare that the bear market's over. Again, I'm not a Bitcoin bear. I'm Bitcoin long, I do believe in Bitcoin long term, but uh, this is this, this was a huge warning sign. Uh, and what's up, uh, teach it? Or hopefully I'm saying that right, man. It's hard. It's hard to see on my screen. But hey, pleasure to meet you, my friend. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be saying about that, man. Um, a lot of people already liquidated about uh, four thousand. So basically, anyone who went long uh, since the twenty third of February, not doing so well. Not doing so well. So again, a uh, lot of trapped. A lot of people trapped, and I mean, a lot of people bought over here, right? You know, we have a lot of longs going up, really, uh, ever since um, late, or sorry, early February. I mean, un un understand these things. Actually, those guys are not going to be trapped, because if you were if you were starting early February, you're actually pretty, a lot of these guys are in profit right here. But I'd imagine that the first kind of support of it coming down from 30,000 was, or sorry, uh, above 30,000 when it was 36,000 was profit taking. And then the rest was just, you know, trapping. So, you know, uh, smart money's buying down around here, starts distributing right here is what we saw, just does their final distribution right here and then trap. I mean, it's classic fucking markets, right? Basically, I mean, if you want to call this swing pattern failure, you could, it, I mean, it, it is. Anyways, um, 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 what else do we have to look at? Let's go look at the crypto fear and greed index uh, out of 47. Oh my God, that changed around fast. Why are you telling me that people aren't that excited anymore? What? <laughs> just yesterday, it was a 69. That's the best number possible. So yeah, I remember, I mean, this was, again, just another confluent factor saying, be aware, be fucking aware. This was the, mo this was the second most greedy that, that people have been in Bitcoin land over the last year. Bitcoin literally has not looked worse. Bitcoin has looked worse in this area than it has at any other point on this. And people are, were the second most optimistic of the last year. That, again, shows the emotions of this market and understand that this is a psychological game. We're talking about human psychology. And this is why these sorts of things are very, 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 very consistent over time. Humans are just, we're just programmed this way. We're conditioned. This is why I read books on, on human psychology, not on trading. I mean, you know, I've read a couple of trading books, but I don't really, I don't really think that they help all that much, to be honest with you. I, I think experience, I think you get the right know-how, you get the right information, and then you just go practice it. That's all it is. Easier said than done, but, <laughs> but on top of that, it's the emotions, right? It's the emotions. And, uh, and looking at this, I mean, you can see that each and every time that we've gotten to a peak above uh, any time above 50, it's been major dump. I mean, double top February, 20, uh, 12,000 high of 10,000, uh, high of 8,000 high of, well, 6,300 before 3,000. And then we even got, we got more greedy here when Bitcoin had not taken out any of the macro areas. Though that that should be very enlightening on what's going on. Now, what I can say from a more uh, and what I'll say now 
is a little bit more directed in it. And essentially, as long as Bitcoin's below this Cyan 89 exponential, I am bearish and I'm looking for shorts. Does that mean I just blindly short right here? No. But as long as we're below the 89 exponential, which is currently around 39.50, I'm, you know, that's, that's my disposition. That also means that if Bitcoin gets above the 89 exponential, we probably do start working our way through the 4,000s. I'd actually feel comfortable with saying something like that now. But if we were to pop back up to the 89, it's going to likely be severe resistance on first pass. Or I mean, it's not the first pass anymore. It's going to be second pass. I'd be look, I'd look for it to be defended. It, it feels like that is where the, the wakes on this market now are. If you're talking about whales, uh, not the country. Um, so yeah. Again, that's kind of what I'm thinking right here. Uh, let's go talk about what else do we want to talk about? We talked about uh, did we talk about lower time frames? Lower time frames just kind of snaking around, looking like they want to consolidate here. I mean, yeah, we do. Have, we probably do have some hidden bearish divergence between yeah this point and this point. You know, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna spend some time around here. But again, I I, I wouldn't be looking for a position right here. Uh, you know, maybe it grinds this area again, 37.20, 37.30. But ultimately, I'm looking for a position somewhere in the at least the high 3800s and low 3900s. Um, and I would not rule out a move, bit it down to 3650 first before that. Uh, until that, I won't really be putting on any, any major positions. My main account is pretty similar to my streamer account right now. I have a small, I have a very, 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 very small sliver of that short still open, but I don't. It's, I mean, it's, it's not even worth. It's, it's like the size of my fucking streamer account. It's not worth it. Um, anyways, uh, and that's sorry. I, I feel like that kind of came off. I don't want anything that I say to be interpreted as arrogant because it's not intended to be, but I feel like that might've come off like that. I apologize. Uh, I apologize about that. It's not my intent. Um, let's go over and check out the other, the other top uh, shit coins. We got Mrs. Litecoin over here. Sorry. The other top highly esteemed coins that would never, <laughs> that would never do something like this. Oh, fuck. And then we have, you know, we have we have uh, three drives of bearish divergence right here um, on the daily. That's likely to get some uh, some play. Yes, we are resting on the 21 exponential. Yes, we are resting on this horizontal. But look at the 200 simple moving average right here. The, uh, the pink at 44 and a half. Look at the look at the 10 simple right here. This is, you know, if we do pop back up to 47 dollars, it's going to be probably a sell. Uh, good volume on the sell back. I mean, again, an event driven thing getting sold into. We're going to go over Mr. Butyl in a second, but remember when we were looking at it yesterday, it was still within the posturing of this guy right here, this rising trend line, which has been kind of governing this consolidation, which typically is, you know, when, uh, when you're in the formation of a, of a rising channel, rising wedge, whatever the fuck you want to call it, typically bearishly resolved, typically bearishly resolved. So again, Perhaps it's going to end up working out something like this, as I do kind of see this, something like that, where this trend line provides some support, you know, on the way down. But uh, you can see that this is likely going to take some time, likely going to take some time. But of course, you know, if Bitcoin's probably, if, Bitcoin, if I'm looking for a bounce on Bitcoin, I'm probably looking for a bounce on this guy too. Um, and again, no real rush right now. You know, you're going to have all your higher time frames turning down. You got your daily Stokes turned down. You got your daily RSI bearish divergence. You got daily Jewel saying down. Um, but that is a daily, you know, it takes some time. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here. How's he doing? He was at just one six. He was at almost 170 yesterday. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, getting a little bit excited, but Mr. Buterall actually having the best bounce out of them all, uh, so far of the top three. Uh, do you, I do consider this a, this a test of the red 10 simple moon average. Of course, if I were looking for a sell on this guy, or, or at least if I'm looking for the area to be defended, I'm looking for the 150-ish area uh, to be defended. Uh, we don't have bearish divergence on the daily here like we did on Mrs. Like when we don't, we do have daily stocks coming down. I'm going to guess that the 10 hour is probably a little bit more like Bitcoin giving you the, giving you bearish divergence. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. We got a little bit there and 10 hour. Oh my God. 10 hour jewel strikes again. Perfect, perfect marker right here. What? Oh my God. That was right here. <laughs> oh, you got to love it, baby. You got to fucking love it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, support at 131 and a half, it looks like. Uh, and again, you know, if, if I'm looking for a bounce on Bitcoin, I'm probably looking for Mr. Mr. Butterworth to come back to around 150, give or take a few bucks or sorry, give or take like half a buck, something like that. Um, by the same token, I'm looking for a 128 to be support. That was kind of like your nice little accumulation below this area, uh, before that breakout. So again, that would be, you know, an, an area of interest. Um, if, if we do reapproach it, which I believe that we will, it's just, you know, timing these sorts of things is the, uh, is a difficult part. Um, let's go look at the other, uh, the other guys, uh, Z, Z cash, Z cash, B cash, A cash, C cash. And now we got Z cash not looking good. Actually the, actually so far the worst one bearish engulfing dildo and ending below the yellow 20 minute exponential bad, 
Bcash. <laughs> Just go through all the numbers or the letters. Uh, bad. <laughs> it's bearish engulfing dildo below the yellow 21 exponential. Did we even violated this this trend line right here. Wow, extra bad. Bad, bad, bad. Five bads out of about five. Uh, Tron, oh my God, Tron, beautiful. Comes up, tests the area that we spoke about. Again, I feel like this is coming off as arrogant. It's not intended to. It's intended to, to be taken by you, and now you can go do it for yourself. And then, I mean, this... It was also not, I was also not looking for this to all happen in the span of the same fucking day. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to pretend uh, that I knew that that, that was going to happen. That's silly. Uh, I don't. Um, but bearish engulfing dildo, good volume. Any below this is the support right here. I mean, just fucking bad, man. Daily Stokes crossing down. Uh, Tron versus dollar, not looking too hot. Neo, NEO. Uh, actually one of the, actually one of the least, the least bad reactions, but I mean, it's not good either. You know, it, this is still considered a, this is still considered a hunt. Yeah, we did. We did close above the yellow 21. Yeah, we did close above the 10 simple. We did close below this horizontal, however, but, uh, overall a little bit, uh, I guess, I guess a little, it looks a little bit better, but look at, look at where all the volume is coming from. Biggest volume spike that you've seen in the last three months, biggest volume spike that you've seen in... Uh, since yeah, since last year in January, is that bullish? Don't know, bro. But that RSI is actually pretty fucking high right now, so I'm kind of scared. Uh, yeah, uh, daily EOS. Um, same thing as uh, same thing as uh, what's it called? Neo kind of. Uh, relative, relatively not having as, as the worst reaction, but you know, again, these these are all coins. They're more emotional than Bitcoin. I'd imagine that whatever you know, whatever direction direction Bitcoin is going to take, these guys are likely to follow. Uh, Ripple coin, Ripple R coin, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, let's go to the three days where I've been using this chart. Again, just having another test at the top of the range. Uh, hut one, hut two, reject. Um, yeah, that 34 and a half cent range, extremely important. We've been looking at this for the last, uh, since December of last year, as long, you know, as long as we are below that, I'm bearish on this guy. Now we are, now we are flirting around with the, with the bottom support trend line, which is not good. Uh, but until it officially breaks, I wouldn't be too damn bearish on this guy. And if it does break, then I start looking towards low twenties, you know? Um, is that all? Is that, did we get all? Um, uh, let's go Monero. How we doing Monero? Uh, not so hot. Uh, bearish and golfing dildo and down all the way. Uh, what about the daily? What does the daily look like? Yeah. Uh, one of the weaker reactions below the 21, uh, even violating this breakout, it looks like it as well. Maybe not if I'm more lenient with it. However, yeah, maybe not. Uh, what about, uh, Stellar? Uh, Stellar, oh my God, hit hit the t hit the nine and a half t uh, cent target, and then straight down, just fucking straight down. Oh my God, um, again massive volume on this below the twenty one. Again, you see the whole you see the whole market moving with each other. You can gauge general strength, but as far as uh, as, as far as the market direction, I think it's quite clear. You know, nothing's changed. That's a big message that I want to have. Nothing's changed until it's changed. I know that's not too helpful, but I need to see proof first as my phone just goes crazy once again. I need to see proof before I change my opinion around to be hopefully bullish, which at some point it likely will. I do believe in Bitcoin long term, but until I see those things, I don't want to get caught up in the overall uh, euphoria that this market has seen below even pretty prominent areas that I feel most people are aware of. So again, understand these sorts of things about the market, understand uh, where the inflection points lie. And of course, you know, as always, there's no real, there's no real rush. There's no real rush in this game. You know, there's an abundance of opportunities. The only real rush is if you're a moon boy looking to catch like the ultimate low or the ultimate high. It's, it, 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 you don't need to fucking do that to make money, man. You don't need to, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be perfect. It, it's, it's only, it's, for, from what I see, typically like people, people, put more pain on themselves trying to be perfect and probably mess up more than just, you know, being okay with being a little bit imperfect and, uh, and letting the chips fall where they may, you know, you're not, you can't be awake at all fucking hours of the day. So how are you going to catch all the moves anyways? Can't be done. Can't be done. Um, okay, cool. So we looked at that. We looked at that. I think I've pr pretty much said everything that I want to say. Um, am I missing anything, uh, really critical? I mean, we do have a lot of support coming in this area. So yeah, I'm, you know, my, my opinion is that we do see a test back up into like the high 3800s, low 3900s first. But if, if we do pop back down and test 3650, uh, you know, before that, then, you know, yeah, I am looking for a bounce there. 
uh, that's kind of the two the two paths that I see. Of course, if thirty six fifty breaks to the downside, that's I mean, at that point in time, we're just, you know, we're going to get, we're going to head towards the prior lows. And it's like, wh what do you say at that point in time? I mean, that's, <laughs> that, there's nothing else to really say at that point in time. We'll, we'll have to kind of judge it when it gets there. I, I don't think that that happens though. I, th I think that you bounce beforehand. Um, of course, like I said, to the upside, I will be running with this. And this is very, 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 very important key part of what I'm about to say. I'll be running with these assumptions um, that this is to be interpreted as a bull trap and direction down in this consolidation as long as we are below the cyan 89 exponential, as long as we're below, again, this area, which was going to be cr basically about 39.50. I will be um, overall directional, positional bearish, looking for looking for bearish positions, looking for a directional trade probably in this range and probably and probably manage my risk right around there. Um, okay, I think I said everything that I want to say and I probably said that enough times already, so I will stop rambling. I do apologize about that. Do apologize about the perhaps more aggressive, intensive talk. Not intended, just getting a little bit excited on my end. Hopefully that is not interpreted the, uh, the wrong way as it's not intended to, but hey, <laughs> can't can't control that on your net. So again, always want to be wishing you well. Always want to be wishing you a happy uh, Red Dildo Blood Monday. And I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to that. And if not, if I don't see you then, well, hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Take care.